It depends, Ruben, how many artifacts Kelvin does have. Yeah, let's let's assume for the moment Kelvin has an artifact land in his hand. And that's it. Yeah. He's going to get to reveal it for two colorless, then tap the ancient tomb, his other land, and the land he gets to play, and that's already six. Yeah. I'm that's guessing like the he's bare gonna, minimum. That's the bare minimum. I'm guessing he's going to want to try to cast something else, possibly a worm coil engine or a blight steel colossus, that he can reveal. Well, oddly enough, what it looks like we're seeing here is an attack with Metal Worker and just passing the turn back, so no broken stuff to do. Hmm. Even though there is five mana in play, Metal Worker can provide at least two, so that's a little bit surprising. Well, Kelvin kept the hand based on the turn one chalice, which is a beating against pretty much every deck. Well, not every deck, but over half the decks in the format. Yeah, a turn one chalice in the play is, is quite the play yes. in this format. Very good against bug, rug, etc. So we're going to see a wasteland here from Ross. I'm just going to pass the turn back, and we'll see if Kelvin can find anything to do with his mud deck. A bunch of mana. You see City of Traders in his hand. The rest of the cards being a mystery currently. And... Another beats. attack. One, two beats. Not the most popular one, two in Legacy. That probably goes to Deathrite Shaman right now, although Stoneforge Mystic could have a, something to say about that. Shout out to Brian Brondwin and his squires that he always puts in his sideboard. All those cards don't let my Goblin Lackey get through. Correct. I don't like that. It is completely unrealistic that Deathrite Shaman has two toughness. I agree. I don't like it at all. That's why I have to switch Among decks now. unrealistic things that have happened, I talked to Pat about this. Among unrealistic things about that card is the number two appearing on that card in the toughness yeah. slot. Rude. So we do see three mana here. We're going to see Metal Worker number two. Ever seen the one two beatdowns before? I, I have. They are not impressive. Yeah, don't need Wormquill Engine. Don't need Kadutha Forge Master. Don't need Blightsteel or Sundering Titan. One two beatdowns. That's right. That's all it takes. Well, Ross is somewhat locked out, it looks like. I mean, like about 20 of his cards do cost one mana. So. Yeah, I mean, he's not really doing anything here. You know, he can uh, he can attempt to get his hand size up to eight, having to discard one of his large threats. He does have Inkwell, Leviathan, and Iona, Shield of Amiria in his deck, and then exhume it back. But again, this, uh, I mean, if he's not going to draw any lands, it, it, it leads me to believe he's got a lot of one drops in his hand. So and it looks like he just drew an Urbor Tomb of Yawgmoth, which he has three copies of in his deck. I guess that's what it looks like right now in his hand. Yeah, very good with dark depths, of course, allowing you to go for the uh, go for the win almost immediately. This also allows his wasteland to tap for black mana should he want to beseech the queen without sacrificing a lotus petal. Now we do see a lotus petal here, and just a turn passing the turn back. So still nothing to do for My us. My guess of what's going to happen now is we're going to see Urami enter the battlefield. Is it about that time? I think it's about that time. That's what I think is going to happen. I would be surprised. I've seen Stranger Things. We, I don't think we have any Urami tokens available on the Star City Games table. Somebody's not doing their job. That's, that's, that's my fault. I apologize. Yeah. I'll take full... Yep. Here comes Urami. There we go. Now, I've tested this matchup a lot, as I told you. Yes. And this can change the game. Yeah. Still anyone's game, though. Still anyone's, Still anyone's game, game. But uh, certainly in a 5-5 Urami token. And we're going to bring up the Tomb of Urami for you guys like, just one more time. Because, again, it's a card that you don't see very often. It's Champions of Kamigawa Block card. Sacrifice Long Lance, but a 5-5 Black Demon Spirit token with flying, which is important right now, into play. There he is. And as you see, there is no token for this. We didn't bring the Rami tokens with us. We went at the start. This should probably just be a Jerry Thompson token. Yeah. <laughs> and in for five we go. So this is actually going to knock Kelvin down to 11. I mean, that's not an unreasonable plan of attack, considering his hand is just full of one-cost spells and exhumes with nothing to discard. Yeah, and, I mean, Kelvin's not really doing anything, and if he ever does tap an, act, an Ancient Tomb, excuse me, it's going to bring down his turn clock from, from three turns, which is where he's at right now, to two, as we see... Copper Gnomes. Copper Gnomes. And we'll bring that up on the screen for That's you That's a weird one, especially for the Metal Worker decks. Even if you're playing Metal Worker, odds are you're not playing Copper Gnomes. However, if you're more combo-oriented, like Kelvin is with his Kuldotha Forge Masters, you definitely want to have Copper Gnomes. Copper Gnomes, as you see there, sort of uh, cheats large things into play. For six mana, you can put in a Blightsteel Colossus, for example. Absolutely. And so now we are going to see... The old demon coming across again. It's going to knock Kelvin down to six. I can't believe my eyes. I think I might see a 
five five demon named Urami go all the way as we see a dark depths coming to play. Scary. That comes in with ten counters, by the way. Yeah, it does come in with ten counters. So uh, that dark depths is going to have some counters on it. Don't don't worry too much about that though. I don't think that's going to be where this game's headed. Sundering Titan, the draw stack for Kelvin. Not ideal. And it's not really going to kill anything right now, but also it may not be here soon enough to actually race against this team of, yep. uh, this demon token, this 5-5 five, five flyer. Yeah. I, I, I'm very excited to see next game when Urborg is in play and Sundering Titan happens. That's going to be fun. That could be a lot of fun. To destroy the only, only one target, seeing as uh, Ross only has swamps in his deck. I predict, I predict a non-basic land hitting the bin from Sundering Titan <laughs> next, in, in the, one of the next two or next game. I find this to be rather likely as well. But now you see Kelvin, he's contemplating. The Sundering Titan, he doesn't really change the clock at all. You know, what he can do here this turn is he can attack for three, put Ross down to 11, and then, you know, put Sundering Titan into play through Copper Gnomes. He would have to take some damage to do that if he uses the Ancient Tomb, if he doesn't have another land. And then, you know, that will shorten his clock. It actually would probably kill him. So the issue here is that, you know, he, the, the clock doesn't change at all. Yeah. It's not fast enough. He needed uh, a Worm Coil Engine or a Cult Oath of Forge Master to be able to change the game. Yeah, Blight Seal Colossus also would have gotten it done. You know, Mind Slaver is something that I'm not sure how good Mind Slaver would have been right now, but it would have been at least like a, you know, a, makesh a makeshift time walk. Yeah. Kelvin's trying to figure it out. He has tested this matchup so well, clearly less than you. Yes. Obviously. You spend your days and nights testing this matchup. You expect this at every uh, every open. Now we see four artifacts reveals, two Volta Whispers, and it looks like two Sundering Titans. No, that's nope, a, that's a excuse me, that is a diamond. that's a mox diamond, so just one Sundering Titan there. So it is gonna generate eight mana via that metal worker. This is probably just going to cast this Sundering Titan. What non artifact He doesn't have any non-artifact guys that he wants to cast, like a like a Karn, yeah, or uh, any Eldrazi. Yeah, none of that stuff. No Karn Liberated. No, no, no just no Karn. Period. Sure. Um, in this particular deck, it's just the big stuff. Once again, it's just the four copies of Kodoth the Forge Master, three Worm Cool Engines, three Blightsteel Colossus, two Sundering Titans. And here comes Copper Gnomes and Metalworker Beats. Not really going to get it done. The Titan coming into play and just not doing anything, oddly enough. Yep. Frost takes Vanilla a draw seven ten. Finds a swamp for the turn. Don't stop attacking now. That's right. Yep. Kelvin's going to drop down to one. You know, I'm not sure I've seen an Urami token. I don't even know what it looks like. Ever. Kelvin I've draws a card, and he's gonna scoop, scoop it, up. it up to the to the Urami token. Well, that's um, interesting. Hey, it's our friend in the top hat. That's a that is an interesting game of legacy, and Look, folks. And that is what that is seriously why this is the best format in Magic, yeah. and it's not even close. Because what if you if you had told me, you know what's gonna happen today, one of these rounds, uh, Urami is gonna win a game by attacking four times. You know what I was said to that? What? What's what, Urami? What's Urami? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that is. It's delicious sushi. All so right. we have Ross Romer up a game, oddly enough, with Tomb of Urami taking it down, just a one of in his deck, apparently for a reason. Yeah, there it is. All right, moving to the sideboards. Yes. Clearly, these players came with the, this matchup in mind. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you? When you think Legacy, you, the two most popular archetypes are Reanimator Depths and Mud. Mud that draws no spells. Mud that draws no spells, correct. So, on Ross Romer's side, his sideboard consists of a Terastodon and a second Shield of Emeria uh, to be able to reanimate. I'm not sure that that's the plan that he wants to be going on. Yeah, Iona's not going to be able to name anything of, of relevance here. And the, the odd thing here is that even though Kelvin did see Vault of Whispers, yeah. or excuse me, Ross did see Vault of Whispers from Kelvin, he doesn't really even know what black cards he could even have, even if he does have any. Uh, him to Torok seems like a much more realistic option, as does Ratchet Bomb. Yep. Um, he also has access to a Null Rod. Seems very good. I would like, I would like that very much yeah. if I was him. Shout out to Glenn Jones with the Null Rod. Yes. Um, 
And what, what do we see over there in Kelvin Young's neck of the woods? Kelvin's side, he has four copies of Parish not coming in. Four copies of Engineered Plague, not coming in. Three copies of Graf Digger's Cage, well, that's, mm, that could maybe. probably join us. We see two copies of Pack Rat, which are unlikely to come in. A Trinisphere, which I think is going to come in, and yep. then a Nile Spellbomb, which is 100% going to come in. Yes. Um, did Ross see any of the... There's Urami. Hey, look at that. Thanks, Troy. That's a sweet token. That is a sweet token, actually. <laughs> that's that's excellent. I wouldn't mind losing to that now. Yeah, no, that's fine. What are those floating masks doing? Though? Well, that was Kamigawa block, so there's sure. really no we explanation for that. <laughs> you know, they're I just mean, there. It's Kamigawa block. Yeah. We have no explanations. Yeah. All right. Um, so he didn't really see any of the reanimation pieces. That's actually true. There was no, you know, there was no nothing discarded like reanimate, like an exhum and tomb. None of that stuff was seen. All we saw was lotus petal, lotus petal, like tomb a land, and tomb of Rami. That's it. That's about it. For, um, all, for all Kelvin knows, it's a Tomb of Arami deck. Well, he also saw Dark Depths, so Kelvin okay. can realistically think, all right, we have a Vampire Hex Mage Dark Depths deck. Maybe we've got, you know, like uh, like Shred Memory to be able to transmute for combo pieces or, you know, Beseech the Queen, which Ross does have, but he certainly can't put Ross on a graveyard-based deck. Yeah. At this point, I, I think it's borderline impossible. Now, the interesting interesting thing here, excuse me, is that now Spellbomb, he can hedge a little bit simply because it does cycle. Yes. So he can do a little bit of hedging there, but the rest of his sideboard cards, I would be surprised to see exactly what route he chooses to take here. I, I, I can easily see him boarding out the Sundering Titans, which I think would be yeah. reasonable uh, based on the little information he got or if he had... A, of complete information, just because it's not really that great here. I think that the Sundering Titans, uh, possibly the Mind Slaver, yeah. are both reasonable things to take out, but he doesn't have a ton of stuff he wants to take out. The Chalice clearly did a lot of work, he just needed to draw some more action. So he's not going to take those out. Yeah. And if, if Chalice is good, Trinisphere is good. Of course. So I imagine he'll just bring in another Trinisphere. So I don't think that any of the Graveyard hate. He's gonna come in. Yeah, I don't think a ton of stuff. I don't think a ton of stuff really does change here. I think if you're Kelvin, you're just saying, okay, I just didn't draw very well. I mean, that sort of thing happens, and just you know, move on to the next game. I think that uh, you know, you're only gonna win so many games with two Varami beats four times. I think that that time has probably ended. So he's gonna want to find another avenue for victory you'd, this round. You'd like to think so. Although he's not too happy with his hand. Sort of very close decision, it looks like. He's gonna keep. So we're gonna see Ancient Tomb here. We're gonna see another turn one Chalice of the Void. We are not. We are gonna see a turn one Grim Monolith. And he's opting, he could cast the Trinisphere in his hand as well right now, but Kelvin is opting not to, picking a better spot or maybe saving that mana for later. Yeah, he wants to probably cast possibly a turn two Worm Coil Engine, something along those lines. We do see an Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth, excuse me, from Ross, just passing the turn back. No discard spells, a little bit of a beating now, because Kelvin's going to be able to, if he so chooses, drop one of his now two Trinospheres or an enormous spell of some kind. We move down to 16, and we're going to see another Grim Monolith here. Now we're going to see a Trinosphere. Does Kelvin have a second land drop? Yes. We're going to read Trinosphere. And so is Ross. And we will bring it up for you guys for you to see. Basically what that does is it makes everything cost three. Right. That's exactly so what it So if you cast a Brainstorm, which usually costs a blue mana, yeah. it would cost two colorless. And, and a blue, blue mana. Yeah. And there's always these interesting questions that come up with the layering of Tr Trinisphere and how do things work. And the easiest way to look at it is it just, it costs three. It costs three. Yeah. Whatever you're thinking, it just costs three yeah. most of the time. Especially, okay, and especially, uh, I think that, how does it affect force of you know? Cost three. Cost three. Yeah. So we discard a blue card, pay one life, and it costs three. Yeah. All right, got it. That says as long as Trinosphere's untapped? Yes. Man, that's a weird one. Yeah. <laughs> I hope he has a way to tap it. That'd be awesome. Tezzeret, attack you. It's off. The coast is clear. Yeah, we did it. I've attacked with many a Howling Mind to prevent my opponents from drawing cards, so uh, I'm not too proud to uh, to try to do that. The thing is, I believe you. 
I did that several times. <laughs> We are going to see a Kadolf Forge, Forge Master. Master here for you guys. And he's going to have Ross read that. We're going to bring it up for you as well. Bringing up a lot of cards this match because a lot of unusual things are going on here. Yeah. Forge Master is going to be able to bring out the big old Blight Steel. Yeah, it's the it's the Tinker Man. Uh, he's a Thrab in Purebreds most of the time. But if you tap and sacrifice three artifacts, you are able to search your library for an artifact and put it onto the battlefield. That's going to be able to snag one of his Blightsteel Colossuses. As we're going to see Pithing Needle here. Pithing Needle's probably going to name Koldotha Forge Master, I'd seeing as it has a, a colon I'd say in that's its a name. pretty good choice. And that's a three mana Pithing Needle. Because it costs three. That's how it works. And so now, Kelvin, I mean, unfortunately, not going to be able to activate the Forge Master, but it is a beater. It is a Thraven. It's still Thraven Pure Bloods. So coming across, for coming across for three, but he doesn't have any lands, and those monoliths are spent right now. So it might be a case of got to get in for three a bunch of times and hope it's good. Hey, worked for Ross last time. That's true. As odd as that is, as we are going to see now, Vampire, Hex Vampire Mage. Hex Mage and Dark Depths. There's the combo. So. Let me explain this combo to you. So Dark Depths comes in with 10 counters. When all of the counters... Cedric, you okay? I'm fine. <laughs> when all of the counters are off of Dark Depths, you put a 2020 flying indestructible creature named Merit Lage into play. A token. Token. We probably have as many Merit Lages in the case as we do Uramis. Um, that would be zero. Uh, and usually it's, it's three colorless, remove a counter. But Vampire Hex Mage says remove all counters from target permanent. And so he's going to be able to sacrifice this Hex Mage to put Merit Lodge into play. There's Vampire Hex Mage. What they call that in business, they call that a combo, Ruben. That is a combo. That, that is a combo. two card combo. Yeah, and we're going to see a block here. We I don't think we're going to see a block. We're going to just see a 20 20. And that, yeah. and that's going to do it. Yep. So, so Ross, Ross Rover. Legendary Flying Tokens is probably what the deck should have been called. LFT? LFT. Change the name. All right. LFT is going to win this round. Game one goes to Urami. Game two goes to Merit Lodge. Kelvin had a bunch of the stuff that he wanted, but didn't have anything to follow it up with. And Ross was able to hit pressure points. Um... Just, you know, all right, I can't cast spells. I guess I'll just use this land. Eight years. Yeah. I've been playing competitive magic. Yep. Eight years. Uh-huh. Going on nine. Sure. My birthday is March 2nd. I have never seen anything like that before. That was that very match. unique. I have never seen a match like that before. I have never seen a 